I wasn't the only one going to have to go through the struggle. My kids were going to have to go through it. And I'm sorry for getting emotional, but they're not going through it now. But they did. We all paid a price. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to View from the Top podcast, where we help growth-minded men who desire momentum in their business, their family, and their finance get through the valleys and up the mountain to their very own view from the top. Hey, I'm glad you're listening today. My name is Wally, uh, also known as Kevin, or Kevin, also known as Wally. Uh, It depends on the day. And we're going to get Big A uh, in the studio with us here in just a moment. Before we do, I just want to mention uh, the podcast, the episode we're recording today um, is a, what we call a forge episode. So what's pretty cool about this is we have somebody that comes on that really has some sensitive, uh, you know, real private information that they want to be able to share as a blessing to others to learn from, but they're just not willing to, or maybe it's not wise for them uh, due to privacy reasons to go ahead and put their face up. So we mask their voice and we mask their face, but we have great uh, conversations where we dive into some pretty heavy topics. And let's get Big A in the studio and then I'll let him uh, talk about Bobby, our guest for today, and just kind of the journey that he's been on. So let's get let's get Big A in here. Big A in the studio. Wally, what's All going right, on? I was go. listening. I was listening a little bit to your introduction, and you were talking about your Kevin some days and Wally the <laughs> other. And you know what dawned on me? <laughs> this is kind of funny. I didn't think about it until you said it, but you're Wally to me when I'm happy with you. But you're Kevin when I'm upset at you. <laughs> so well, just so you know, my if mom, I call you. My mom, when she's Kevin, not happy, it's Kevin Michael. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I've never added your middle name, so maybe I'll do Let's that in the future, yeah. man. How you though. been? You doing That's well? So yeah, I'm doing well, man. It's been been good. We've actually had a couple of weeks off here. We yeah, recorded some yeah. episodes, and then uh, we had a couple of weeks off to, to yeah, kind of enjoy good. our spring a little bit. And now we're back yeah. in and rocking and Got rolling. to take a trip. Matter of fact, I want to talk to you about a portion mm. of my trip. Uh, got to go see my granddaughter. You know, she lives down in Florida and mm-hmm. Robin and I took a little time and went down and visited with her. But what I wanted to ask you about is something that's not completely new, but it's a little bit new. It's called Clear. And you can go up and, you know, look into the Clear and it reads the your retina, I retina guess, scan. in your eye. At the airport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at the airport, and then there's the TSA, which Robin pre-check, and I have the yep. TSA, the pre-check. And so uh, I was walking by this attendant, and he said, hey, if you've got an American Express, they'll pay for clear. And I said, well, I've got an American Express, but I don't think I want clear. One of the reasons is because the line is three times longer now on clear <laughs> than it is the pre-check. But really the point of my conversation for this topic is not about whether you get it or not, but what do you think about it? Like, where's this thing headed? Because now I'm seeing this thing in cruise terminals. It's in doctor's offices. It's in finance. uh, It's in the airport. Like, is this going to become the thing? Do do you think that clear is, you know, even studio uh, stadiums, they're starting to do it in football stadiums now. It feels a little bit invasive sure to me. And Robin is like, no way. But I'm like, well, okay, we can sit at home. <laughs> but I think if they require this going forward to go in to see a Titans football game or get on an airplane, then you're going to have to do it. Any thoughts around that? Just real quick. My buddy John Acuff uh, posted the other day about it, and it really got me thinking about it again. And so I thought I'd bring it up for a second. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Um, uh, somebody said one time, whether this is true or not, they said uh, that the future of technology actually isn't necessary. And w- what they meant by that was there's really not any future technology that's necessary for us to live on a daily basis and enjoy our lives. Right. It really isn't. I'm not saying the pursuit of it is bad. I'm just saying, just like a lot of other things, the pursuit of technology uh, you know, can lead to a lot of things that Frankly, I'd prefer not to live with or, or have to deal with. Um, and I think that like AI is probably one of those. Clear is probably one of those. There's things that I'm like, man, we didn't- Blockchain, cryptocurrency. Yeah, if we didn't have to go there, things. like that'd be great. I'm yeah. not personally going there, you know, as far as like uh, putting a lot of effort into it and and things like You're that. You're not going so, there intentionally, but you could be forced to participate. I could, yeah. I mean, if that ever came, I think I'd have to address that then. Um, I don't like- you know, I, I think it's important to be prepared 
for when you have to make those kind of decisions, but I don't like to sit around and talk about, you know, right. what I'm going to do when that happens all the time. You don't um, know. Don't yeah. Know, well, I, I mean, yeah. you kind of know because you kind of have some, yeah, hopefully you've got parameters, some, some, some boundaries. Yeah. Some boundaries and some things set up yeah. that you're willing to live with or not. And right. you have to make those choices. I think when we're not, when we're totally unprepared, it gets us in trouble. But related to clear specifically, I've I've done the pre TSA. There's actually a global one that I'd like right. to do. I've done is. a little more global traveling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's a pain coming back in and out it and is. not having the global. Like that's a big right. deal. Uh, that's actually pretty helpful. Um, when it comes to getting my retina scan, the first thing that I hear that, that I hear in my head is the uh, the crime of stealing people's eyeballs is going to increase. That's what I hear. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> like, like, yeah, it's really like, like somehow take my, yeah, take my eyeball yeah, and all of a sudden yeah, he watches. I think that may be a bit far-fetched. Um, yeah. I, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not, not pro technology. I just think there's some things that I'd rather not do. And if I'm faced with them yeah. and I have to make a decision about something, cause I feel like it crosses some boundaries or something mm -hmm. like I'll do it at that point. Um, hopefully they still have, you know, I mean, we've been talking about digital currencies and stuff for a long time. We've had cash it's coming uh, for a long time, and and we still have cash today. And that 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 took a while. This is, I think gasoline cars are going to take a while to phase out versus yeah. all electric. So I, yeah. I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's a thing I'll have to like necessarily make a hard stance on in like my lifetime. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. I, know. When it I happens, think I, I think you will. Uh, yeah, quite you think honestly. so? Yeah, because I think uh, technology is exponentially It does happen a lot faster a, than it did At a greater ago, yeah, pace sure. than it did 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, I think sure. they the said technology of, doubled the every year way faster. now versus every 10 years. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a buddy of mine challenged me on that the other day. I love to shoot. And so I have a handgun carry permit. And, you know, he said, you got fingerprinted and you buy these suppressors for your rifle and you've got to have a federal stamp and be fingerprinted at a couple of different locations to have these suppressors and uh, like, what's the difference? And I didn't have a good argument for mm. him. Quite honestly, just to be honest with you, I may be a little bit um, to the other side uh, related to what you're saying. I kind of like the technology, mm. but it starts to feel a little invasive yeah, when you're scanning yeah. your retina. And so yeah. that's where I've got to decide if we're crossing the boundaries. Listen, let's talk about our guest today, Bobby. Bobby and I walked through some very difficult situations uh, in his personal life. I was kind of a mentor, kind of a coach. He did join Iron Sharpens Iron Mastermind several years ago and got around a bunch of great guys. But man, this guy went through it. I mean, a really, really ugly divorce. Uh, he's got a blended family now. And I thought it would be really good to get him on to discuss uh, his situation, uh, because he's gone from some real trials uh, to some major successes as it relates to his kids and his new wife and his ex-spouse and things like that. He's kind of mended some fences, if you will. And so I know that 40% of the American population deals with this mm -hmm. now to some level. And so we thought it would be a good idea uh, to bring Bobby in very vulnerable, very transparent. Uh, he's the kind of guy that wants to help other people. And so it's really fun to do it in this episode because we do do it in the forge where we mask the participant so that we disguise their voice and disguise their face so that uh, they can be really, really transparent. And so really excited to have Bobby with us today. Yeah, let's, uh, I am too. Let's, uh, let's get Bobby in here. Hey, Bobby, man, I'm glad you're with us today. Uh, you know, going back a number of years, I don't even know how many years it is now, five or six years ago, you heard me speak from stage, and you kind of wicked me out a little bit. You came up to me right directly after the presentation, and you said, hey, man, I want to hire you as my coach. And I'm like, well, hey, my name's Big A. It's nice to meet you. And it kind of went that way. <laughs> and then you and I entered into a one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentoring relationship and you were in a pretty rough spot at the time. I mean, you were walking through some deep waters. And so I thought it would really be helpful to our community to bring you on because now you're thriving and you went through a tough spot as it related to a divorce. And now you've got a blended family and I got the privilege of walking through that journey with you. And so thank you, first of all, for coming on today, being willing to share your story. So won't you give us a little context and, uh, take us back several years and just kind of talk through 
having a blended family. Yeah, yeah, good to be here, guys. I appreciate the invite, and um, I'll try to get right into it. Uh, it, I think it was 2020. You were on stage uh, at church and uh, talking about the uh, mastermind group that you that you led. And uh, my backstory was uh, I had been in business uh, on my own. I was partnered from 2012 to 2015 uh, in a, in a boutique company, um, three years of funding, uh, them and getting them off to the races. I decided that I'd be better suited on my own. So I left in 2015 and started up my own company and, uh, have been doing that since 2015. So, uh, nine years now. Um, but I had gotten to a point, uh, kind of in all aspects of my life where I knew, I had gone as far as my knowledge could take me. Um, and that was relationally, spiritually, um, you know, business wise. I, I found myself a lot of times where I was having to make a decision and I wish I had someone to call. Um, and I had joked with you, if you remember in the very beginning that, uh, I had spent probably a year or two years, um, really searching online. Um, word of mouth, trying to find uh, a business coach, a mentor. And I really didn't find anything that felt like it was a good fit for me. Uh, the day I saw you on stage, I knew that that was a God thing. And I knew, and I had my kids with me, I knew that I needed to catch you before you left. So as soon as, as soon as they dismissed church, I ran straight up there with my kids in hand and introduced myself to you because I just felt like, that wasn't a coincidence. You were there for a reason and I had been looking and that was kind of an answer to some prayers that I had. And I had told you, I think when we first started talking, I wish there was something called rent a grandpa or something like that. My parents had passed away and my grandparents were all gone. Here I was in my mid forties, early mid forties and nobody to call. No, nobody I don't know to. about that rent a grandpa comment, but uh, we'll just, <laughs> that's okay. It. But I uh, wrote that down. I, I had forgot that about right that. Now, man. <laughs> I had forgotten yeah. about that, but yeah, you did say that now that I remember. So rent a grandpa, big A. I think, I think you actually bought the domain name uh, out of it. Just, uh, I think you mentioned to me one day, you said I went and bought that www.rentagrandpa.com so or something, I did. but anyway, I, I forgot about that, man. It's been years but, ago, so I forgot that you're right. You have, you have no idea how, how invaluable having someone to call when you're in a tough situation is. And, uh, I heard someone say recently, you'll never love your parents more than you do when they're gone. Mm -hmm. And, it's true. And one of the reasons is because you realize that there was a wealth of knowledge that you hadn't tapped yet and they're not there, you know, and, th and those, th th those are the people who, you know, there's not very men on this planet that want you to do better than themselves, but your parents, your grandparents, you know, so, Sometimes getting advice from outside sources that aren't trusted or family members um, isn't the best advice because those people don't always want to see you succeed. So I found myself in a situation where I knew a lot of guys in the industry that I was in that were more experienced than me, but they were also out for themselves. So I couldn't really call them and ask them, what do you think I should do here? Because it was a cutthroat business. and so. It was it was it was an answered prayer to meet you to get involved with Iron Sharpens Iron because there I found that community and of people that had a vested interest in my own success, um, you know, and so that that was that was really that you know, and, and you've seen me from the beginning, you know, when I was going through troubled waters kind of going through the woods going through it if you would and i told my wife this I said, sometimes i feel like an imposter in my own life because we've been so blessed you know 
um, I don't always feel deserving. And it's too much, you know, too much. Well, you're doing so great. Fast. Yeah, you're doing great now, Bobby. But I want to go back a number of years because when I first met you, we met week after week after week, and you were in a really dark place. And I remember countless conversations that we had. It's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I'm confronted with this situation. I'm going through this really ugly divorce. Uh, I've got kids. And, man, I could tell. I don't know that I've ever met a man that loves his kids any better than you do. Like, I've never seen a guy that puts his kids at the forefront of his thoughts in every decision that you make. And that's been pretty cool to watch that. But it was difficult because you've got a business to run, right? And you're going yeah. through a divorce and there's someone else that you found that you loved and you're torn. You're like, man, I don't know what to do. And do I work this out? And I want to be there for my kids and I want to honor my commitments. And I remember the anguish that you were going through many, many, many times to tears. You were at a spot that you just didn't know where to turn. So take us back there just for a second. What was going through your mind? Was it your family? Was it your kids? Was it your business? All the above? What are some of those things that you um, were dealing with during that time? It was uh, business with business. I mean, that's just an outside variable that you can, you know, it. Uh, and, and in 2020, I mean, you know, COVID hit, transportation stopped. The industry that I'm in was uh, hugely impacted, just like a lot of industries. And so um, we saw some of the worst times that we'd ever seen in my industry um, in that time. And, um, you know, and then, of course, I'm going through uh, a divorce and uh, it was my my only challenge. My, my biggest challenge with with my divorce was my kids. That was it. My dad, so my son was six uh, when when we were going through the divorce. And my dad left when I was six. My parents got a divorce. He left when I was six. And then he left out. He, he moved out of state. And uh, he didn't come back for a lot of years. And so that had a big impact on me as a kid. and And so I knew what that felt like as a six year old boy whose dad had left and I didn't want to be that to my son uh, or my daughter. That was the, that was the biggest thing for me was how, how are they going to be? Are they going to be okay? How, or how are they going to handle this? Okay. And I, and I was in a situation where the bet, you know, I, I didn't really have a choice that was, it was a toxic marriage and there was one person willing to work on themselves and it was me. And I, in my mind, I thought my kids are better growing up where at least 50% of the time there's peace because the other 50% I couldn't control versus a hundred percent of the time being conflict. And that was where my head was at. And so, um, let's go back always, for a second. Let's go back for a second. I mean, to interrupt you. Let's go back for a second. I want to yeah. remind you of some things that obviously you've forgotten. You said it's the only thing. That's not true. There were things that you were dealing with lack of sleep. You didn't have any motivation. Your finances were in a terrible position. Uh, oh, that's all. Mentally, yeah. emotionally, <laughs> oh, you yeah. were distraught. Oh, yeah, that's all. You oh, didn't yeah. know where you were going to live. You didn't know if you were going to live well, in Kentucky or Tennessee all. or which house. Or So let's don't say yeah. it was just the kids, okay? Like you were in total but, chaos at that yeah, time. Yeah, I, I agree. There was a lot going on. I, I, I guess what I mean is that uh, my primary focus was protecting my kids. I give you that. That was my primary I, I focus. I agree with that. I agree with now, that. I was going through a lot of stuff at the time, but those are the things that I focus. want to navigate though. Those are the things I want yeah. to talk about. Like how did you ultimately then make the decision? Because you had a beautiful home in an area of Nashville, 
Uh, there was another place, you know, in another state that you were living temporarily. Like, take us through some of those challenges. Where did you get counsel? How did you decide? The people that are listening to us today, a lot of people are going through the same thing that you were going through three years ago. They're right there right now. So yes. what advice yeah. would you give them in making some of those decisions? Maybe the same as you did or maybe differently than you did? So you're in that situation and you're trying to look forward and there's two paths, right? And so I've, I've always been really good at playing things out into the future. So, you know, you're, you've got two paths that you could take and one path was a, was a, was a dead end, a, you know, it, to me, there was always a brick wall and the brick wall was the person that, you know, you can't control other people. You can only control you. You, you only have control of what you do, how you, how, you know, how, how you behave, respond, treat people. And you don't have any control of the other person. And so. But you tried to, because I remember every yeah, single yeah, week, I'm yeah. going to change them. They're going to have to do this. I'm going to see yeah. to it that, you know, she responds in this way. And you kept hitting the wall. You were like, man, what yeah. do I do? And you came to this realization. You, you can yeah, only control what you do. That's exactly right. That You can only control what you do. And so uh, I just ended up in a situation where, you know, uh, road A was uh, a brick wall. Road B um, was going to be a hard one. Okay. Um, I did have a beautiful home in the nicest neighborhood north of Nashville. Uh, you know, right there on the lake, um, you know, we, uh, there was going to be a lot of things that I was going to have to lose. And I knew that, you know, um, but the gain, even though I knew it was going to be, uh, going to take some years, uh, the gain was worth the struggle that I was going to have to go through. But, but always, always the one thing that would eat at me was I wasn't the only one going to have to go through the struggle. I was going to have to, my kids were going to have to go through it. And I'm sorry for getting emotional, but they're not going through it now, but they did. And we all paid a price. And, uh, and they, they got through it, uh, seemingly far better than I did. <laughs> they're resilient, aren't they? Aren't they? <laughs> yeah. they? They bounce. Yeah, they're, 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 they're they, they, they adjusted really quick. Um, I mean, it wasn't, but maybe a couple months and, you know, they were good. I mean, they get good grades in school, you know, um, they're, they're happy. Uh, they've, they've got what I consider, uh, they live in a nice home on both sides of the equation. You know, um, they've, they're, they've got more than they need. Um, you know, so they, they've done remarkably well given the situation that they had to go through and it wasn't their choice, you know? Um, but I can tell you now where we, where we are today, you know, in comparison to where we were, uh, is far better on, on my side of the equation. Uh, and, and I think on their mom's side of the equation as well. Sometimes two people just don't need to be together, you know, and you fight your faith, you know, your, your faith kind of comes into play because you know, we're told that, you know, we need to work things out and, you know, you want to keep the family unit together, but sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. And it's unfortunate, but it just doesn't. So you do your best to get through the woods, so to speak, um, with the vision of coming out on the other side, being as good or better. Uh, you obviously want to want to be in a better situation 
And so there's been a lot of work that we've gone through to get to here, but we're in a far better situation now than we were, you know, because they don't have to see the they don't have to see the confrontation anymore. And um, I've learned a lot as well. It's been a really good experience for me. Bobby, because, it has, but I'm going to poke the bear a minute. I know I'm picking the scab off, but you're talking so much calmer now than three years ago. Three years ago, there was total devastation. <laughs> you didn't have any vision for the future whatsoever. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. We can always look right, back right. and go, oh, my gosh, I wouldn't trade a million, you know, for going through. But at the time, you were like at a crossroads most days. You were like, big A, I yeah. don't know which way to turn. Like I'm dealing with extreme craziness over here on this side. Now my kids, what am I going to do? There was not any sense of normalcy in their life whatsoever. And that's what I want to talk about for a second to the people that are listening today. Give them a sense of hope and you have, but take them back to the reality of the value of you surrounding yourself with trusted advisors you had a council of men that were around you, that were encouraging you, that were helping you, right? And they were loaning you their courage when you didn't have any. I just saw you day in, day out, week after week, where you absolutely didn't know where to turn. And so today, it's easy to see it, right? You're flourishing, your family, your unit is doing amazing. Uh, but there was a time where you were like, man, I don't know what to do next. Like, I don't even know which way to turn. And that's where I want to take you back to for a second so you can give the people that are listening a sense of hope and encouragement as it relates to going through this journey. Yeah, you know, when you find yourself in those situations, um, you are lost, especially if you've never been through it before. That's not something that I'd ever been through before. I mean, you know, you're in relationships and relationships, uh, if they don't work out, they don't work out, and those are easy. Um, to me, but when you have children involved now, uh, you've got, you've got a lot of difficult things that you're going to have to navigate, um, because I don't know that you love anybody more than your own children, um, mm -hmm. on this planet. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, so that's, that's a tough, that, that, so every decision you make, because you are their provider, you are their caretaker, they are looking to you for everything. Every decision you make, big or small, has an impact on them. Mm. So, you know, you wrestle a lot with every single little decision because, especially me, uh, I'm trying to, if I do this, how does this play out? How does this affect them? Um, so I just was always cognizant of that, knowing that whatever I choose to do is going to have an impact on them. And, I just need to minimize the impact on them as much as possible. Yeah, and you took the blunt of it most of the time. I even wrote it down because it was so jumbled in my own mind, I couldn't get my head around it. There was a point in time, and even currently, where you were dealing with parenting, co-parenting, step-parenting, dealing with an ex-spouse, the ex-spouse's new spouse, the current spouse, the current spouse's ex-spouse, and it was like you didn't have any idea which way to go. You were like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? Tell me something that you think was a mistake early on so that the people listening to this today, 40% of the American population today are living in blended families. 40%. Right. That's a big portion of our audience even today. Yeah. Tell us, first of all, one or two things that you did is a warning. You're firing a shot over the bow of the boat. Do not do this. What would you say first and foremost? My biggest mistake, if I'm going to shoot a warning shot, is whenever we blended officially and got under one roof, you know, I have, this is, this was my mindset, right? Going into it, you don't think about it behind sides 2020. I had my kids and she had her kids. And so, any time that my kids would do something and mess up and she would get on to them, I would come to their defense and defend them. And what, what, what happened was I would defend them. So if they would, if they would do something and she would get on to them, they would look at me to defend them. 
And you kind of feel like you have an, uh, a responsibility to do that out of guilt. Right. And so I would defend my, my kids. And what ends up happening when you do that is they don't respect the other parent because you're coming to their defense. Sure. Just run to you. So what the other parent just said is null and void. My dad's here. And what he's saying is going to be the golden rule. And so that was that that causes more problems in a blended family, mm. in my opinion, than anything else. Mm. The the issues that me and my 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 wife have or have had um, almost always stemmed from the children. Mm. It wasn't a her and I issue. Ninety nine percent of the time, it was uh, me defending my kids. You know. And so it, it, I've gone through a learning curve and I've done a lot of work on me, but I realized where, you know, and she would tell me, you know, you keep coming to their defense and they're not, they don't respect me because they think that, you know, what I say doesn't matter. And I saw it and, uh, I adjusted, you know, it was, that doesn't work. Um, did you know it at the it, time? Did you recognize no, it initially? I, not initially, not initially. I think you're just doing the best you, you you can, you know, you're making decisions on the fly because you've never been in this situation before. So it's all new. So it's, you're like a kid, you know, you, you make a choice, you touch the hot frying pan, it burns you. That's when you learn, you don't know until you do it. And so it was the same situation, uh, when we blended, um, I would do these things on the fly not realizing the impact that it was going to have on the whole. And the impact was that my kids uh, didn't want to listen to her because, well, I'm going to ask daddy, you know? And so I backed off, you know, cause I know she's a, she's an unbelievable parent. She's an unbelievable mom. She has, her kids are great kids, you know? And so, I knew that, well, there's really no reason for me to be defending my kids because what she's getting on to them for is, is legitimate. And so I need to back off. I need to let her parent so that there's a level of respect for her as well. If I come to save the day, there's never going to be that respect. And if I, if my children don't respect her, then, then I'm looked at as I'm allowing my kids to walk on her. And there's only so much of that that someone can take before there's resentment. And that resentment turns into ultimately a divorce because 75% of second marriages end in divorce. Wow. And I love her more than any human being I've loved on this planet. And I could not see myself allowing a divorce to happen because of me because i was doing something wrong so i learned i learned to step back you know and so and we both do that you know if, if her girls it's not often but you know if they're uh, on the wrong path or something you know i i have the freedom to speak to them and, and give them some direction uh and i don't Discipline, I don't discipline her children. She doesn't discipline my children. And I'm talking about corporal discipline. We don't, you know, spank each other's kids or any of that kind of stuff like that. But she has a right and she deserves to be a parent to my children, just as I deserve to be a parent to her children, as long as we've got their best interest at heart, you know. And if you don't allow that, if you, if you come to the defense of your children, you will end up getting a divorce in a second marriage. No doubt about it. It'll, it'll end. It won't work because there's just too much. You have to think here's somebody agreeing to marry you and spend the rest of their life side by side with you and agreeing to help raise children that are not theirs. That's a big commitment. So imagine somebody committing that to you and then you allowing your children to walk on them, to not respect them, 
to not ever have to listen to them because you're going to continue to come to their defense. So that's a, that's a train wreck. If there was one thing that I could offer to anyone in this situation where they find themselves in a blended family, uh, is to let their step parent be a parent. As long as they're a good parent and they have your children's best interest at, at, at heart, then then they're that you should never come to the defense of your children's misbehavior because at the end of the day they may be your children but they're still misbehaving right so they need to get the guidance of the step parent just as well as you and you can't come to their defense if you do right okay so that i'm just gonna put this out there that that all sounds great yep Uh, so i'm a i came from a divorced family my my dad left when i was five very similar to you um, and I believe you a hundred percent. Like I've witnessed, I could go and tell some of my story on this, but this is about you today. So it sounds great what you're saying, but for you to get there. So that was, that was maybe a mistake at first. That's the shot across the bow to say, Hey, let's be aware of this, that this is going to happen. What was the journey for you and your new wife to get to that point? Like how long did it go on? Like it, who brought it up first? How, how did you approach it? Did you have outside counsel? Did you guys figure it out yourself? How many fights did you have before? You're like, this is stupid. <laughs> right. like, <laughs> yeah. So all, all of the above, we, so there's a particular gentleman in my group and iron sharpens iron who has been through a um, similar situation, mm-hmm. been through a divorce, remarried, blended their family, um, who I talk to quite a bit. Um, and I would call and ask, you know, Hey, I'm in this situation. Is this normal? How did you handle it? You know, what mm-hmm. did I do something wrong? Um, and man, he was invaluable. He's become a really good friend that coupled with going through, you know, how do you get here? Well, it's like, it's like a business, right? It's like, it's like, it's like building a successful business. You start up a business, you go out into the market. You try to sell a product or a service or whatever, and you make a mistake and that mistake costs you, you know, in business, it costs you money. It costs you employees. It costs you reputation in a relationship. It costs you, it could cost you a relationship. You know, it, it, it causes, uh, disputes, um, trust, you know, yeah. Yeah, there's there's so many things. So that so that was a part of it is is make is doing things, and then and then seeing the repercussions of the things that I was doing, and uh, sometimes she would tell me, you know, sometimes she would bring it to my attention because I didn't see it, you know, especially did you handle that. Defending. Did you handle that really well at first? No, <laughs> no. I you're hard headed. I know you didn't. <laughs> I got defensive. Sure. And, mm-hmm. uh, how'd and, that and, work and out? I, how'd that work out for you being defensive? <laughs> it, it just causes more problems. Yeah, you know, you, it does. uh, it, it's, 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 you know, you, you, you defend your position and I, and I'm just going to, I'm just talking to you guys. Like I would talk to anybody. I'm in therapy currently with another member in ISI and this guy, man, uh, he's just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And, I just got to a place where I realized that I needed to work on me. I needed to look in the mirror and admit where I was doing wrong, you know, and, and, and be willing to, 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 you know, shell out the money to find the right person to help me work, work through my own issues. And, um, and I, and I'm in the process right now. I've been going through the process for months. Um, and one thing I've learned is that, you know, is so I'm a really logical person. I've been accused of not being very affectionate. Uh, and I think this is a story for a lot of men, um, especially guys in business, not trying to generalize, but a lot of the men I know hear the same thing from their wives. You're not affectionate. I don't think you love me, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, um, but we're, I'm, I'm a logical creature. My wife is very emotional. And so, you know, 
um, anytime something would be brought up, uh, I'm just being logical and having a logical conversation and explaining uh, my points, right? So this is why I did this one, two, three, four, and list them out. And I thought when she would say, you always get defensive and we can't talk, I thought she meant I was being argumentative. But I wasn't being argumentative. I was presenting a case, right, <laughs> to maybe bring some understanding. But but I was defending. I just shut it down and, for her, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was defending, hence defensiveness. And I I never put it together Mm -hmm. in my head that 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 me presenting my own case was was defending or getting defensive. And what I've learned is that that's not where I need to meet her. You know, I need to meet her where she's at in, in her emotions, you know, and instead of getting defensive, what I should say is I'm sorry that I did something to make you feel that way because that's the last thing that I want to do. I don't want you to feel that way. I don't want you to feel disrespected. I don't want you to feel unloved. I don't want you to feel like you're unimportant. I don't want any of those things. In fact, I want the opposite, you know, and so I've learned to, and I'm still learning, but I'm, I'm learning to, instead of presenting a case, you know, saying, well, here's why to meet her, where she's at and not be Mr. Logical, but to try to really meet her in an emotional place and let her know that it's, it's safe. Your feelings are valid and you're safe here to express those feelings to me. And I don't want to trample on that. And I was really bad at trampling on that, you know? So, Defending my kids, defending yeah, my yeah. defensiveness of my kids, and and all of those things, they don't work. Yeah. Bobby, I've not been in a blended family, but looking from the outside in, it feels like the way you're describing this that the greater benefit of getting on the same page with your spouse is the first hurdle to accomplishing a successful blended family. It, it doesn't really sound one sided towards the children. It feels more like a unity in regards to the new spouses uh, getting on the same page, loving each other, serving each other well first. And then as a result of that, you can co-parent in a blended family. Can I throw an elephant in the room out there that I know guys are listening and going, okay. And there's actually guys listening that have never had this experience of blended families. And I praise God for that. It's not something I'd wish anybody to actually go through. But there's guys listening right now that are Mm. like on the cusp where you were three, four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so my question to you would be like the elephant in the room is that sounds really great. Like, yeah, do that in blended families. Why didn't you just do that before? Mm. Right. And so I did hear what you said about I can only control what I can control. There's two parties in a relationship. Can you, can you walk back? I know it's really hard, man. You've done a really good job, Bobby. And I'm proud of you, by the way, like the steps you're taking, the changes you're making, being intentional right. about your life. Like God's using that for his glory in your life and your kids' lives and your new family. And, and there's things we haven't even talked about today that I know that you've shared in other settings where I'm like, dang, that's only something God could do. So I praise God for all of that. And it's hard to yeah. go back. I know it's hard to go back. But go back with go back with our audience, if you will, just a little bit. Go back to like that that stage that you're at where there's guys listening right now that are like, man, like life's really hard in my marriage. I'm not talking about hard as in like, you know, we had a couple of fights, but like there's this drawn out thing. They've gotten counseling. There's like, maybe there's not you know, alignment spiritually. I don't know where you guys were were in in your, you know, first marriage and all that, but like you're right at that point. Maybe you made some mistakes in that. Maybe you did everything exactly like you should have, but like, can you speak into that at all for those guys that are right there at that point where they're, they've got to make a decision and like it's, it's, they're feeling it like today. Yeah. um, Certainly been there. Mine was 
took years. Mine took the span of about five years to get there. How many years were you married in your first marriage? Seven, eight. Okay. All right. But it was, it started from the very beginning. It was, you know, we. Were you believers when you got married? I've been one since I was, you know, young enough to remember. Okay. Um, uh, her family was Catholic, okay. but. And I have my opinion on, you know, saved, not saved. I mean, I just, uh, we won't get into that, but, uh, there was a long span of toxicity that was, uh, that went unaddressed and it wasn't toxicity on, on, what's that? You're just trying to do it on your own, the two of you? Uh, well, um, at, at one point I had. You know, and multiple times, I, I think I said, you know, we need to speak to somebody, you know, and we need to counsel with someone, get a, a counselor or whatever. And that was always met with rejection. Unwillingness. Um, yeah. It wasn't. Uh, in fact, the comment was, I don't need to go talk to somebody so they can tell me I'm crazy. You know, so. You know, that was my particular situation. Everybody's situation is going to be different. But my particular situation was I was in a situation where I knew there was problems, but half of the relationship wasn't willing to look at it, wasn't willing to admit that there was an issue and seek help, you know, and because of that refusal to to do some inside work it was causing a lot of problems inside the four walls and my kids were having to see it and as a you know as a parent you know as a dad especially i just felt like the most important thing that i have to do right now is i have to protect my kids i have to protect my kids and that's where my mind went. Can I ask you a really hard 50% question? Fifty percent apiece. Is Can I ask you a really hard question about that? Chaos. Yeah. Let me ask you a really hard question. Was that in any way, shape, or form an excuse for you to leave? Was there any any part of that thought of like I got to do this to protect my kid? I'm not saying that wasn't true. I'm not saying that's not true. Hundred percent, I agree. Right. That that's true. But was there some of that where you're like? I you, like I shouldn't say excuse. That sounds terrible, but I don't know how to pose that question. I guess were you Maybe, looking for a way out anyway? Yeah, I was never looking for a way out. I just got to a place where I knew where I was at wasn't working, mm-hmm. and then I had to make a decision. Mm-hmm. That I mean, that was that was all there was to it. I mean, it was just I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And it, it, there's, there's no help. This isn't working, you know, and I can't continue on this track if things don't change because it's not good for anyone. And so it was, and that's just the way it worked. You know, it was, it was just, I just got to a place where I just knew where I was at wasn't working. And I knew that to change things, I was going to have to change things. And the things that I had to change were the hard thing. You know, it was very hard decisions. Um, so you didn't saying, feel like you, you didn't really feel by that point, probably that you, I know a lot of guys that a number of guys, I shouldn't say a lot. That's so arbitrary. A number of guys that I've spoken with, you know, over the years, there's like this point where they like just, they want to give up. Like I, I know mm-hmm. you, you came at some point of giving up. Right. But it sounds like you actually worked through that and you were actually making a decision. Your decision was different. It wasn't about giving up as it was. You mentioned that you were going to make a change for, you know, what you believe was the health protection. There, there's, there's a saying, if you, if you want to change some things in your life, you have to change. you have to change some things in your life. And that's where I was at. Mm-hmm. Right. That could and be I a country to, song, Bobby. You should, uh, 
<laughs> do you play the guitar? <laughs> yeah, they, a little should. bit. He does. He does play. Bobby, I'm going to ask another was... question. Is the reason we do the forge and the reason we mask the people that come in here so that there's a genuine, authentic, transparent, very vulnerable spot. And so that's the reason we do these episodes. I want to ask you another hard question. You may or may not want to answer, but some other people out there may be confronted with this same situation today. How much of a variable was another person in this decision for either of you, for you or for your ex-spouse? How uh, much for, was for another me, person a variable? Okay. For me, it wasn't. Because it could make it um, a lot easier to make the decision if there were. Yeah, sure. Yes. Sure. Uh, it was, for me, We there started being it. You know, we got married in 2011, and we started having some issues in 2012. Uh, right serious, serious anger issues. Not on my part. Uh, mm -hmm. just, just off the chain, out of the blue, anger, you know, and... And I personally believe a lot of that had to do with her childhood. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things. Uh, she came from a pretty high strung family, um, where there were some conflict, a, a good bit of conflict. And I think, you know, you end up becoming what you're around, you know, it's just what you know. So, um, that that was so it, it was it was an issue for a lot of years, you know, and it's still an issue. <laughs> I mean, right, still been, dealing with it. Yeah, I'm it, still dealing with it. You know, sure, it, it's, sure. it's been uh, twenty eighteen mm -hmm. to now, so six years, mm -hmm. and and I'm and I'm the I'm the I try to be the absolute best co parent on the planet. You know, through our text messages, I don't ever, I don't, I don't get into uh, disputes. I don't, sure. uh, I don't, I don't use profanity in our text messages. Um, I'm as, uh, as level headed as I can possibly be, but you can read through my text messages that I get and it's just anger, so yeah, much yeah. anger and it's never been addressed. And that was the, you know, that was. That was the thing for me. I didn't, you know, I, I I never wanted to live like that. I'm not like that. I'm a real laid back. Easy so let's go back. Person. Let's go back, Bobby. What would you do? What safeguards would you put in place if you could have a do over? Let's just say, let's go back 10 or 12 years. What is some suggestions to the audience that's listening today? Man, you really need to do X. What are some of those things that you would put into place if you could go over and do it over again? It's not even get there. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's a good question. Just, Tarot uh, cards, uh, uh, magic yeah. ball, yeah. psychiatric. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> what would you implement counseling sooner? What would you suggest to people that are listening? Robin and I've been going to a guy here in Nashville for twenty or thirty years on a you know, as need basis and periodically I go like, would you recommend that sooner just to kind of get a checkup yeah, in meeting I with a third person? I, you know, I, I think, I think I would, I would recommend, I would recommend counseling probably from day one, you know, in it's a hard situation enough when things I, are good, <laughs> much yeah, less I when mean, they're bad. Right. Yeah. But you know, if you can avoid the bad caused by poor decision making, caused by a lack of understanding of what works and what doesn't. I mean, if you're, if you're working on a, if you need a wrench and all you have is a hammer, you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, right. That's true. So, that's point. so as men, and I can only speak to the men's side of things, but as men, we're given a certain set of tools mm -hmm. and, and we try to use those tools on our relationships with, with, of, with with someone who those tools don't work with mm. they just don't work and so and and, and that's kind of what i'm going through learning now at 49 years old is that you know i wish if i could go back i wish i could go back and understand these things at the beginning of relationships versus getting to a place where you're hitting a brick wall 
and having to go. Because see, what happens is once you get to that place and you hit a brick wall or you start having problems, there's already damage that has gotten there. There's been damage done to that point that you can't erase. It's like crumbling up a piece of paper and then straightening it out. You're still going to see the creases. That paper is not perfectly straight anymore. Mm. And you may get your you may get your relationship to a place where it looks kind of straight, where everything looks good, but those creases are still there, mm. and they don't go away, and they come up. It, the things that you did wrong when you didn't know you were doing wrong, those right, things right. come up when you have a, a a heated situation come up in in a really good relationship. That the past will still come up, so. Bobby, let me ask you a question. You've mentioned two or three times during the course of this conversation, your group, Iron Sharpens Iron. This sounds a little bit self-serving, and I don't mean for it to. But would you recommend other men out there get into some organization, some accountability group, some mastermind, get in a peer advisory group? Would you? Has that been beneficial? Because you've done it for years now. Speak to that just for a minute and the value that it added to your life and how it could be different for others. For me, it, it, it totally changed uh, the game um, because I was at a brick wall in every area of my life, pretty much, and uh, I didn't have anybody to turn to. Joining ISI gave me uh, an outlet, and and here's the thing about ISI or organizations like ISI: you're surrounding yourself with with uh, people who want to be better who want more in life, they're wanting to raise, step up, go up another level, you know, and those, you know, they say a rising tide raises all ships. So that's exactly what's happened in my life is I surrounded myself by a bunch of men who were uh, primarily Christian based men um, that were either business owners uh, successful, uh, professionals, uh, whatever. And, and these, and the, and it was a group of men that were all striving to be a better version of themselves than they were yesterday. And so a lot of what I've gone through and where I'm at today and, and, re- and even where I'm going, uh, is 100% traceable back to my involvement with ISI. The, the relationships that I've been able to form with men who have been through what I've been through, um, who, who counseled me through tough decisions, uh, you know, and, and have helped me to get to a place, not financially, but here in, in, in my headspace yeah. between my, between my, you know, the six inches between my ears, mm-hmm. that's where it all starts. And when you find yourself in a tough spot and you don't know the answers, you need to have somebody that can point you in the right direction, kind of show you that, you know, the yellow brick road, if you would, uh, that, that, that you need to take to find yourself out of the woods, back into the, into the sun, you know, where the clouds have parted and things yeah, are getting better. So I was lost. I was in the deepest part of the woods that somebody could be in lost, you know, like just, just, on a daily basis. Like you said, I didn't know what I was going to do on a daily basis. You know, when my kids would leave to go to their mom's uh, place, I would turn Disney junior on, on the TV and leave it on until they got back home because I couldn't deal with the silence of them not being in my house. Mm, It was too quiet. So it, 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 it made me feel like they were home by just hearing those cartoons running 24 hours a day until they got back to daddy's house. And then I was good, you know, so that there was a lot, you know, that's a lot of tough times that I went through, but I was on a call once a week with 10 other men, including yourself who were helping me navigate that, you know, I mean, I was in a real tough spot emotionally. Finances were tight. You know, my industry got hit pretty hard with COVID. And so I, man, I just, I look back now, and like you said, hindsight's 2020. I look back now and, and there's, there's, there's two, you know, like 
I don't know how I would have got through all that had it not been for three things. God, my current wife, because she's an angel, and she loved me through all the nooks and valleys that I was going through. She loved me through it and stuck by my side. And the third thing was ISI. For all the men that I've been able to reach out to and get advice from, and and, and that advice was everything that that you know has the has a place in my life, business, my children. I've, we've been through some tough stuff with one of my kids, you know, and uh, they've 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 been there every step of the way. They've become family. That's what it's wow, become. That's it's it's like. They're my family. They text me. Yeah. Hey, yeah. how's your kids? How's, you know, how's this one doing? You know, have you guys gotten that figured out, that situation? Mm. You know, that's, I don't have, my family doesn't text me. Mm. The only people that, the only people that reach out to me mm. are my ISI brothers. Wow. Who cares? That's powerful. Yeah. And they care because they chose to care. Mm-hmm. They care because they're a part of an organization that, they're all they're all men who have more to give, and so that's why they're part of the organization. They're not just there to take. Most of these guys give. They give everything they got it's just helpful. to see you. Just to mm-hmm. see you. Uh, be, you know, you're be always going to be. You're always going to be confronted with situations as we go through life. It's called doing life. And Mm -hmm. so you've gone through a tough season in your life and you've got those unbiased, trusted advisors around you weekly, communicating with them daily. It's going to help you through future challenges. As we end today, I want to say just a couple of things, Bobby. First of all, I want you to know how proud I am of you in the accomplishment uh, that you've been able to uh, to get in the success in your own life. It's been amazing to watch your journey to go from where you were at. You did the reps, you did the hard work, and now you're getting the result of it. So congratulations on that. I want to make it crystal clear also to the audience that Wally and I's heart is for the men that are out there that are going through these difficult situations right there today. We, we want to be of service to you. We want to help you. We want to walk with you through these journeys. And so feel the freedom to reach out and share with us if you're up against the wall right now and you need some assistance and you need some encouragement like Bobby has been able to get. We want to be that resource for you. There's two other resources that I want to mention also. Gary Chapman did a great job with two books. One of them is called Building Love Together in Blended Families. So if you get an opportunity, he co-authored that book. But one that is a classic that he wrote years ago, maybe decades ago now, is called The Five Love Languages. And I want to encourage you to order those two books right now so that you can work through the difficulties in your own life because we don't want you to have to go through these challenges. But if you do, we want you to know that there's support for you today. So just a recap Keep your head up, right? Be encouraged. Know that there's a path that you can take to get you back in a good spot. Bobby, I want to thank you, man. What a blessing you've been today to everyone that's listening to this uh, Forge episode. I know it's been an encouragement to me. I'm sure it has to Wally as well. Thank you, man. And I'm sure it it will to many others down the road. So, man, thank you. We appreciate it. So grateful to have you today. I appreciate y'all having me, and uh, I hope that uh, some of the things that I've been through and the mistakes that I've made, hopefully uh, some guys out there that may be going through similar situations aren't like me, aren't hard-headed, don't learn from their mistakes, learn from mine. (laughs) Learn on somebody else's dime, not your own. That's right. So that's a good (laughs) word. That's a good word. Thank you a lot, Bobby. Appreciate you having you today, buddy. We'll see Yes, sir. Y'all have a good day. Wow. Wally, I don't know about you, man, but uh, Bobby was pretty transparent. I mean, I didn't really expect that in the initial stages, but knowing his personality, knowing his disposition and his heart for other people, I'm not surprised by what he offered and started thinking back about kind of his journey and the things that he went through. And obviously, you know, uh, we weren't there on his journey Mm -hmm. Uh, from the beginning. uh, He kind of came to us and said, hey, I need help at this point. So I want to make it crystal clear that 
view from the top is an organization that we're not condoning anything. We're not in support of anything that some people would consider. Um, you know, we're, we're not saying go get a divorce if that's not working out for you because, you know, we want you to stay married. Uh, we feel like it's a godly principle uh, that we want you to stay married. But if things don't work out, we want to be a resource to help people kind of put their life back together again. Yeah. We want to be able to help and support and encourage. And it's not about condemnation or being judgmental. Uh, it's about helping people uh, where they find themselves. And so that's exactly what we've done with Bobby is to try to help him put his life back together again and get back on a good path. But I want you to take some of the things that he said today to heart. I want you to really think through, am I looking for an excuse to get out or would you be better served to do the reps and the hard work and stay where you're at? You've really got to get counsel get people around you, really do the hard things to make a great decision for you and for your family. But I want to thank you today for listening. Please take all these resources that we've given you so that you too can go out there and have the view from the top that we each and every week try to help provide for you to have for you and your family. Hey, thanks so much for listening in again today. It was good to have Bobby on, like Big A said, good to be a part of that. Uh, his journey to be able to listen in and share. Hey, uh, I just want to let everybody know the best way to connect with us. People ask us, hey, how can I connect with you guys? One of the easiest ways, if you go to viewfromthetop.com slash group, that's viewfromthetop.com slash group, you'll be redirected over to a LinkedIn, a private LinkedIn group just for Christian business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals. And we love to connect with you there. We carry on some of the conversations we're having in here, dive a little deeper, and also, it's a great place. I think there's well over, I don't know if we're pushing 300 or whatever, but there's, there's a number of, of guys in there that you would align with. So I'd encourage you to go over there, get connected. That's viewfromthetop.com slash group. And you can just apply to join in there and we'll let you in as long as you pass the sniff test and uh, can carry on some of these conversations. So we hope to see you there and uh, we'll see you next week.